Hello, today I'm looking at this Invisi 100 watt GAN USB C charger. They say it's the world's smallest 100 watt GAN charger, so we're gonna have to do some comparisons of that. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use, and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. This is probably the easiest unboxing I'll do. Done. The packaging weighs 77 grams. The power adapter weighs 194 grams. Definitely on the heavy side. So I got a few different adapters for a size comparison. So first I have the Satoshi 100 watt adapter. And you can see it's a little bit smaller. It's not a ton smaller, but it is a little bit smaller. Height wise, they're about the same. I also got the Anker Nano 265 watt. I mean, they're just, they're just kind of different, but it's very small for a 100 watt power adapter. I will give them that. World's smallest, I don't know. On the power side here, we see we have 100 watts, 100 watts, 20 watts, and 18 watts. So the USB-A port's gonna be a QC power delivery, and then all these other ones will be able to do the normal PD 3.0. When we take a look at the specs on the side, we can see we have our ETL safety listing for Canada and US. You can see it's an Invisi P310A, and it's a, you know, 100 watt GAN USB-C charger. And it does give you the different modes here. One thing I don't see, and I didn't see this on the box, and I'm not really sure what it does, is, is how it handles multiple ports at the same time. All right, let's go ahead and get it plugged in. So it does have a little LED. It's probably pretty hard to see that, but there is a very, very dimly lit LED right there. So we have a red LED that tells us that we have different modes available. And we can see up here on this screen, we have five volts right now. So we have five, nine, 12, 15, and 20. We have the standard range of voltages for the output on that PD port. Let's check the next one. So we have five, 9, 12, 15, and 20, and 11 volt PPS. So that top one didn't have a PPS mode, but this second port down does have a PPS mode. So we got five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, and that's it on the third port, but that's only a 20 watt port. Check the USB-A port. This is a QC board, so this will check the different voltages that this can deliver. That's going over here to this little screen. It's a little bit harder to see, but right now it's reading 12 volts. We have nine volts, five volts, and 12 is as high as it goes. So that's, that says it delivers 18 watts. It delivers 18 watts and not a bit more. And I'm just curious if I disconnect this and plug this into one of these other ports if that resets. It does. So the voltage actually dropped down to five volts. If you're using these two ports at the same time, it'll actually reset. It actually just reset on its own right there, probably because it was too much power on the one port while this other port's plugged in. And this other port never came back, so this is still sitting at zero. All right, so we're back up to the, the max power for that port. Let's go ahead and plug in another port and see what happens. So it does allow some port swapping while it's delivering power to another port, so that's good. At least in that case. So the it looks like these two ports down here are linked together. So the USB-A and this first USB-C port seem to be tied together. So if you do swapping while these are plugged in, it resets those two ports. I'm curious what'll happen if we do this with these 100 watt ports. Up here, they deliver that same kind of resetting situation that's happening on these two lower ports. So like these are 200 port watt ports. My, my suspicion is that these are controlled by one controller and these two lower ports, the lower watt ports are controlled by another controller. So there's probably two USB controllers in here. We're doing about 25 watts out of that first port, right? This in, and now we're doing zero and it reset. So it reset to five volts. So it did actually reset this port when I plugged it in. These two ports reset when you plug something into one of these 100 watt ports. So using one of the 100 watt ports, plugging something into the other 100 watt port resets the first one. Kind of a strange behavior, but you know, it is what it is. And then the same thing happens with the 20 watt and the 18 watt port at the bottom. You get a reset condition. And so the big downfall of this power adapter becomes apparent right away. And I've talked about it a few times. We can see that even under this load right here where we have, you know, 80 watts coming in and power factor staying very, very low. So we're seeing only 0.58, it's, that's extremely bad. All right, so right away we can see on the screen here, we have massive peaks. So the power is being drawn over very, very short periods of time. This is not what we wanna see at all for a power adapter, especially in this class range. All right, so I've taken this up to its full 100 watt load now, and we can see that these peaks are massive. This is the current in red here, power is in the green, and this is what our sinusoid waveform looks like coming in. So ideally, all those waveforms would be on top of each other, except for the power would be all positive. But as we can see, yeah, it's a very, very large, sharp peak, very ugly, not very nice 
<laughs> All right, so just as an example, we're now doing the Satoshi power adapter. We're drawing our 100 watts over here, and we can take a look at these waveforms. They all look about the same. They're all pretty much on top of each other. We have a very high power factor because this does have power factor correction only in the 20 volt mode, which is not great, but it does at least have it. Well, especially when it's drawing those high, high amounts of power, it'll be, it'll be doing its thing. Uh, one of the things we see is the VA is about half, so we're using half of the current as the other power adapter, RMS. And overall, the waveform just looks a lot cleaner. Well, let's take it up to overload and see what it can do. So we got 100 watts, 105 watts, 110 watts, 115 watts, 120 watts, 121 watts, 122 watts, 123, that's it, it's out. All right, so it's back on. It did recover to the five volts, so it does not require disconnecting and plugging back in to recover, so that's good. But 123 watts is where it tripped, so this thing's set a little on the high side. Quite demanding on your cables. You know, we're talking about another, basically another amp, so these are rated for five amps, but you're probably doing more like six amps on some of these cables to get to that. 123 watts before it protects itself. This isn't a fault condition. You shouldn't be, this, your, your device shouldn't dry and draw that much power. So, you know, in a fault condition, this thing will try and deliver 123 watts before it shuts off. But it did, it shut down safely and it recovered. So, not a problem. All right, so when we take a look at the overall numbers for this one, the first thing we see is it didn't have that power factor correction. So all those numbers were low. They started low and they stayed low. Lower than everyone else, actually. So this one's really the class loser in that respect. For a 100 watt power adapter, this thing had basically low scores pretty much across the board. When we take a look at this compared with other devices, we can see that we have a new loser for the 100 watt class, getting an 88 overall. The idle is 36, and the idle power consumption was not too bad at 0.106 watts, just meeting the US DOE6 efficiency class. The power, real power efficiency was very high, but it did that almost as a sacrifice of all the other power quality metrics. I'm gonna have a video coming out where I kind of describe how you actually end up losing more power in the wiring of your house by having a power adapter like this versus a power factor corrected power adapter. So stay tuned for that one. When we take a look at the idle graph, we can see that it's okay. It's actually not bad for the 100 watt class adapters. When we look at the overall performance though, we can see that it is the worst one. There are 65 watt adapters that handily will beat this one, like the Anchor Nano 2 or the Amazon Basics power adapter. All seem to be better than this one. This one's very very, very low, especially for a 100 watt class adapter. That extremely low power factor just really didn't help anything. All right, so this Invisi 100 watt GAN power adapter is a skip. Yes, it's safety listed, but it's too expensive for the feature set that you're getting. For a $70 power adapter to not give you power factor correction is not acceptable. The positives, it does have a lot of ports. You get four ports. You can plug in lots of stuff, as long as you're not trying to draw too much power from each of those ports. Note that when you plug in those ports and unplug those ports, it does reset one or the other port. Gonna be stepping things up in the next couple weeks with this 130 watt GAN squared power adapter. I have no idea what that means, but hopefully this one has power factor correction. We'll find out. So like I said, the website is coming. I got some stickers made so we can go ahead and label this thing. And there it is. Now we know it's been tested. Uh, another quick update, I added some things on my website. So now there's a schedule so you can see when I'm planning at least to release videos. I'm not gonna guarantee that I'm gonna stick to it every week, but that's my estimate. So at least you can see what's coming up in the near future for videos. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.